Hello, um, everybody. Um, today I will um, start my um, lecture talking about the stomach and genome. And I'm expecting uh, from you to um, describe the well, be able to describe the position and functional anatomy of the stomach, its position, parts, sphincters, vascular lymphatics and nerve supply and key relations to other abdominal organs. As well, we will describe the genome, its parts, position, secondary, retrovirtual attachment, vascular lymphatics and nerve supply and key relations. So actually two structures here, genome and the uh, stomach, we will talk about. But we will start with a, a very uh, important structure in the viscera. And that's the uh, esophagus. Now, the esophagus is a muscular tube, and it uh, extends uh, from the pharynx to the uh, to the stomach. Okay, so it's it's around 25 cm. Now, this uh, muscular tube is uh, is um, first of all it's, it's following the curving of the vertebra. And it is uh, just left to the median plane, and um, uh, it is um, in the chest. It is in the thoracic compartment. Now, afterwards, it will enter the diaphragm. So it will pass through the the esophageal uh, hiatus in the diaphragm, just to the left of the median plane at the level of T10. It will be terminated in the Esophagogastric junction, which enters the stomach in the cardiac orifice. This is the cardiac orifice. And this cardiac orifice is actually 40 cm from the uh, upper um, incisors teeth. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you measure all these, this is 40 cm. Now once it's entered the um, stomach in the cardiac orifice, that will be at the level of the um, T11 vertebrae. So just between the diaphragm and it's uh, and then entering the stomach, it is just one vertebrae size. Now the whole length here inside the peritoneum, it will be retroperitoneal, except it will be covered by peritoneum anteriorly and laterally. Now it's got a relation in the abdomen. Now, in the abdomen, the Esophagus descend, as I said, just for one vertebrae size, so that's around 1.3 cm. Now, what is the relation here? Of course, we got a peritoneum anteriorly, and there is a left lobe of the liver as well as covering. Now, posteriorly, you still have the left crust of the diaphragm just behind. Now, if you go um, and, and you see here, there's fibers from the right cross from the diaphragm that will form a kind of a sphincter, as, as a natural sphincter from like a sling here, like a sling around the esophagus. Now, accompanied at the level of T10, accompanying the esophagus, there are two vagi, okay, and there are branches of the left gastric vessels. Talking about the vessels, the main blood supply here inside the abdomen is the left gastric. While in the, um, as well, there is a branch from the acidic, and there is a left inferior phrenic artery as well supplying. Now for the venous drainage, the venous drainage is through the left gastric vein, and that will go to the portal vein, and the, and then you have Another vein, or the systemic venous system, through the esophageal veins that enter the zygous vein. It's kind of, 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 of two venous systems, systemic venous system here, and then you have portal venous systems, so the portal systemic anastomosis here. Uh, any condition here could lead to, um, you know, varicose vein, veins, and there will be bleeding afterwards. Now from this, 
you can see that the epithelium is changing, and that's that to call the, uh, the the zigzag lines is called the Z line, and it is a junction of the esophageal and the gastric mucosa, different mucosa. Of course, this could be seen in endoscopy and in, li in, in living ob uh, subjects, but um, uh, in the cadaver and the embalmed subjects, it's, you cannot recognize it. So um, this is a kind of sphincter, this is the cardia where it's enter, and everything here is changing now, even the muscles directions will be changed as well. Uh, in terms of lymphatic drainage, of course the lymphatic drainage of the abdominal part of the esophagus is into the left gastric lymph nodes, that's what will follow the GIT. Now the efferent will go mainly to the celiac lymph nodes. The innervation of the abdominal part of the esophagus is from the vagal trunks, and that's accompanying, uh, accompanied the, the esophagus. Thus, you can, you can see, you can recognize uh, some of those um, uh, nerves here. Is, is the, there should be nerves here as well. Because they will become like the right and the left vagus will become the anterior. So, so the left vagus will become anterior and the right vagus will give, be, be posterior. And we call them uh, anterior and posterior, now gastric nerves. And the, the vagus nerves change its name. Uh, thoracic sympathetic trunk as well uh, is important. The sympathetic supply, greater and lesser splanchnic nerve. And the esophageal nerve plexus, now the left gastric artery. So there will be plexuses of nerves controlling this. Now, uh, talking about the position of the stomach, uh, we can recognize here uh, two important lines here. We have what we call the subcostal plane, that's touching the eighth costal cartilage. And and, and there is the, um, the other plane, of course, the uh, transiliac plane. In between here, that's at the level of L1, eighth course of cartilage L1. And, and, and depending on this and the two midclavicular lines, we can have like a, a nine quadrants here. Uh, what we are interested in now is the left hypochondric regions, epigastric region, and the umbilical region. So, where's the stomachs could lie in inside these lines? Talking about now the surface anatomy of the stomach, now we know that the cardia, or was it the left seven costal cartilage T10, and that's the cardia was, was T10, T11, was this joining the esophagus. The pylorus lies in the transpyloric plane, like the L1. There's a curvature, as, as a kind of a curved line, concave to, to the right, joining those two points, the pylorus, the pylorus and the cardia. The fundus here, the fundus is reaching to the left fifth intercostal space. And it's like in the where the, you can find the epic speed. So the fundus is, is moving high up under the, under the diaphragm. Now the greater curvature is a curved line drawn from the cardiac orifice to the summit of the fundus. From the cardiac orifice, summit to the fundus. At like the top of the fundus, and then to the left, finally turning medial toward the pyloric or um, uh, pylorus, uh, the pyloric orifice, passing through the intersections of the left lateral with the transpyloric plane. So it's a, a great curvature. That's what it's called, the great curvature. Now next, I will uh, try to talk about the uh, stomach part. But then that will be in different uh, video. Thank you.